because of that. Considering the current output for legal consultants and legal professional use by the city for various litigations, what would you hope to achieve budget-wise in reducing that output? Or what would you guess might be the uh, estimate the output of uh, the use of outside attorneys in order to carry out your office effectively with all aspects of its uh, requirements? I, you might not be able to answer all of that now. <laughs> <laughs> the next time we have a budget uh, or a, a, a panel, maybe we could get more specific. But I'd like you to get a guesstimate type of proposal as far well as the, uh, especially the second part. Thank you. If I could, is it me first? Um, to, re to restate your question, then, if I might, Terry, you're, you're asking uh, um, what is the my expectation and any of our expectations regarding what the budget would be for for um, handling um, outsourcing and particularly uh, um, litigation work. The, the, the current impact uh -huh. of the budget, with the impact with you to be able to effectively achieve your goals, okay. and then comparing the impact uh, that we have been facing now. Uh -huh using outside lawyers. I'd like to, very good, I, I think I understand your question. Um, one thing I would definitely like to do, and city attorneys, uh, at least as far as I've been in those offices, have always tried to do is to separate the budgets um, between the advisory services and the day-to-day -day operations of the city and the litigation budget. Litigation is so unpredictable. Um, it's really hard to know any given year of what types of cases you're going to have and how much you're going to need to spend on that. Litigation is one of the more effective things as a result to outsource for, uh, for that. So while it's important to have an in-house litigator, um, because the flow of litigation is like this and you don't want your lawyers tied up you know, in the courtroom when you've got so many day-to-day -day responsibilities, that's where you try to uh, um, focus your outsourcing. But to know what that's going to be is difficult. And usually you work that out with risk management. And the budget from risk management is a budget that you're able to draw on for that type of work. In terms of the, the other half of your question, uh, I think what you're getting at is, in general, the need for everybody these days, uh, and in private business and in government, to do more with less. Um, that city attorney's office, when it was um, full flag, if you will, when I was there, had 10 attorneys um, and uh, maybe five or six support staff. We were still under siege you know, with work volume. We, felt, we still felt like we weren't doing the job that we really wanted to do and that the city deserved. Um, and I, from what I understand, city's equivalent size of city of Chula Vista um, in population anyway, typically have 12 to 15 attorneys. And so doing more with less is going to be a very big challenge there. And I think working in the budget process is one thing. Seeking grants uh, uh, to fund uh, additional attorney services is another one. In fact, the, the police chief was able to uh, get a grant for a, a community prosecutor, two-year grant for a deputy city attorney dedicated in, in, in the police department. Um, internship programs, I think, will also be valuable. There's an existing internship program there that should be expanded. Those are the things you kind of need to do on the other half of the budget side in order to be more efficient and do more with uh, and do more with less resources. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Fay, can you proceed? Sure. Um, again, I'll try to I'll try to phrase the question. I think I have a, an idea from Mr. Gugans. Um, <laughs> um, the, the problem the problem with a small city attorney's office in, in a in a busy city is that uh, with four attorneys the general structure for a city attorney's office looks like addressing litigation advising the city council and the mayor and city uh, boards and departments and enforcement of the, of the city's ordinances to make sure that the things that you and the city pass are enforced that's three areas right there. And if we're talking about four or five attorneys, one civil case can occupy um, quite a bit of, of an attorney or multiple attorneys' time. So uh, I agree with Mr. Gugans that I think you have to separate out the budget for um, civil litigation. And you may have to send those those particular cases out depending on the complexity because if your whole office becomes uh, devoted to handling litigation what happens is you're unable to provide 
the correct advice, which then spawns more litigation. So you want to make sure that you don't drop down on one particular side. Um, in that regard, I do think only as a short-term measure are grants appropriate. And the reason is because grants come with strings attached. They come with requirements that you, you follow reporting requirements and you, and you do those things, which means you need more staff to handle that. And they also, um, they run out. And if you get a grant for a year, at the end of that year, you have to find a way to fund the person that you hire to put in. Um, the problem with internships, and I'm a product of internships, I love them. They work great. The problem is, is that in a small office, you have to take an attorney away to have them supervise and help the, the intern. So the balance isn't there. I'm not against internships. They're just not a stopgap measure in, um, in a tight fiscal economy. Thank you very much. Mr. Cos. To answer your question more directly, I, there's no doubt that the new city attorney is going to have to do a lot more with less, particularly because that city attorney is expected to be out in <coughs> organizations and committees and meeting with the public. And so that, that in and of itself is going to be a drain. However, the city attorney also has to be, um, has to think outside the box on how to create revenue for the city attorney's office. For example, I think that there are opportunities in how we are enforcing our misdemeanors and our ordinance violations, and I think the city attorney needs to work together with the district attorney's office to make sure that the city is actually enforcing its fines and keeping the fines that are, uh, that are not necessarily staying with the city of Chula Vista. Um, if, if we look at how we can keep money in the city of Chula Vista through the city attorney's office, I think our budget can then increase dramatically. And what that really requires is a good li liaison with the, the district attorney's office and other uh, local agencies that are working with the city of Chula Vista where our money is going to go into them. The second way we can save money is to stop hiring moves forward. All right? It, it, that's $400, $600 an hour. You know, when I worked for the school district in San Diego, my, my billable rates, like an insurance company, is like $175 an hour. There are tons of tons of able counsel in the city of Chula Vista. We need to keep our jobs local. We need to keep our outsourcing local to the greatest extent possible while making sure that we're using the most experienced counsel when we do have to outsource. Uh, but they shouldn't be getting rich off taxpayer money.